Welcome to Chapter 3, Section 3.1, Graph Linear Functions, Average Rate of Change, Increasing, Decreasing, or Constant. And also we're going to do a couple word problems. Graphing a linear function. Now I'm not going to go through this. Um, you've done it in Intro to Algebra, College Algebra. So I just want to talk about the basics just for a second, just as a refresher. A linear function is a function of the form y equals mx plus b, or f of x equals mx plus b. The graph of a linear function is a line with slope m and y-intercept b. Its domain is the set of all real numbers. If m does not equal 0, the range of a linear function is the set of all real numbers. If m equals 0, the range is y such that y equals b. And this is everything that we've been taught previously. Average rate of change. Linear functions have a constant average rate of change. Rate of change really means the slope. That is, the average rate of change is a linear function f of x equals mx plus b. Now remember, this triangle means change. So the change in y over the change in x is the slope. And that's all the average rate of change is. So let's look at this table really quick. Here are my ordered pairs. So my ordered pair is negative 2, 13, negative 1, 10, and so on. To make sure that this is actually an average rate of change, we're going to figure out the slope between these two points. And we've done it here, and we have negative 3. We did it for these two points, and once again we have negative 3. And you'll notice that the slope never changes. So that tells us that the average rate of change is negative 3. It's also linear. That means it makes a line. Determine whether the function is linear or nonlinear. There's a couple ways you could do it. We could graph it. So let's do that really quick here. Um, negative 1, 12. So negative 1, negative 12 would be, oh, down here. Then we have 0, negative 7. Then we have 1, negative 2, ah, and it looks like we're making a pretty good straight line. Doing it by hand like this probably isn't the best way because we do have these decimals in there and we're not sure. The easiest way is to find the slope. So we can use the decimals or let's just use the ordered pairs negative 1, negative 12, and 0, negative 7, so the slope between those two points, so I get negative 5 over 1, which is negative 5. Well, that works for that one, but let's test another point. So let's do, um, we'll do this one up here. We'll do 0, negative 7, and 1, negative 2. So the slope for that line, which turns out to be negative 5 again. And your question probably is, well, how many points do I have to test? You're going to want to test at least three. So since we're this far, we can actually figure out, well, what is the equation for this line? So remember, y equals mx plus b. And yes, I did say this was a line. I kind of gave it away, but that's okay. I think we kind of figured that out already. So m is negative 5, and our y-intercept would be negative 7. If we think this is a linear line, we could put this in our calculator and make sure that all of these points match up. So this one is linear. Determine whether the function is linear or nonlinear. Now this one I kind of gave away a little bit. If we have an error, that means that it's not even graphed. So let's look at this one for a second. We have 5, 0, then we have 6, 1, and we have, it looks like it's going to be going like this. Is this a linear equation? No it's actually nonlinear because remember the definition if it's linear then your domain and range are all real numbers if we have errors in here this is that means it's not linear and this equation actually is y equals the square root of x minus 5 linear function increasing decreasing or constant now once again We've gone over this many times in Intro to Algebra and College Algebra, but let's look at it one more time. If it's increasing, 
Here's a sample of increasing. How I explain it in my intro to algebra classes is I say, well, let's say we have a yodeler, and he's walking along here doing his yodeling. He's going up. That's increasing. Another thing we know is we notice that our slope is 2. Since it's positive, that's also increasing. Once again, if I make my little guy, and he's walking along, he's going down. And that's decreasing. And we notice that our slope is negative 2, which also tells us that this is decreasing. And finally, for a constant, here's our guy, he's walking and he's not going up or down. He's going a constant. And you'll notice that there is no slope. This equation is the same thing as y equals 5. Now we're going to start into our word problems. Straight line depreciation. The straight line method is the simplest method of asset depreciation. With straight line depreciation, the cost of an asset is spread evenly over its life. The calculation is done by first finding the difference between the asset's cost and its expected salvage value. This number is then divided by the number of years the asset is expected to be used. So let's look at that in terms of a slope. The change in y is the value in dollars of a machine or a car or any product that will depreciate. The change in x is the change in the age and years of the machine. So if you think about your car for a moment, as your car gets old, older, the age gets higher, the value depreciates, the value goes down. Suppose that a company just purchased some new office equipment at a cost of 120000 per machine. The company chooses to depreciate each machine using the straight line method over 10 years. We're going to build a linear model that expresses the value V of each machine as a function of its age x. What is the implied domain of the function found in part A? Graph the linear function. What is the value of each machine after four years? When will the value of each machine be 72,000? So let's look at A first. Build a linear model that expresses the value V of each machine as a function of its age. Now remember, we talked about Y as being the value of the machine in dollars, and X is its age. So that gives us our two ordered pairs xy is 0, 120,000. What that means is when you first purchase the machine, it's year 0 or time 0, and the machine is worth $120,000. We want to depreciate the machine over 10 years, so that would be our x. 10 years is what we're going to do, and at the end of the 10 years, we want the machine to be worth $0. So that's how we get our two ordered pairs. What they're asking is for a linear model. So basically, we want to find y equals mx plus b. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out our slope. So it turns out our slope is negative 12,000. So let's put that in here. So y equals negative 12,000 x plus b. Now b is our y-intercept. And if we think about that, the y-intercept is when x is 0. So this is our y-intercept. Since they want us to build a linear model that expresses the value v, we'll have v of x, our value, equals negative 12,000 x plus 120,000. And so this is our answer for a. Next. What is the implied domain of the function found in part A? Well, remember, we're talking about a span of 10 years. So 0 is when we first purchase the machine, and 10 is when the machine is worth 0. So this is our 10 years. Remember, that's our x values, is the age. So our domain is x such that x is between 0 and 10. Let's graph the linear function. So what I did is I put it on the calculator and you'll notice a couple of things. My x minimum, you'll notice that my x, my x minimum is negative 5. We don't care about the negative values. You're not going to have a negative price or a negative date. 
I made the max 15. I know that the straight line method, we're not going to go over 10 years, but I did want to see what's happening right in here. My y minimum, once again, I made as negative 5. The y max, now that has to be bigger than how much your machine cost. So I just made it $500 bigger, once again, so we could see a little bit of what's happening here. For the scaling on that one, I probably should have made it something much bigger than 20, uh, maybe 100 or 1,000, but that's okay. And we can see what's happening. So this is the graph. What is the value of each machine after four years? Well, this one's really kind of nice, kind of easy, because if we look at our table, when X is four for four years, the machine will cost 72,000. Let's say it didn't show us on the table. So first what we want to do is we're going to write our equation. And then since we're talking about time, that's our X value, that's our age. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put 4 in for X. And when you put it into your handy dandy calculator, you should get 72,000. When will the value of each machine be 72,000? I know, it's kind of silly. We just figured out it would be four years. But let's look at it. Once again, here's my table. And we can see here's, but what if it wasn't very nice? Let me show you how to do it algebraically. Y is the money. So we're going to put 72,000 in for Y. And we need to solve for X. We need to figure out how many years it will take for this machine to depreciate to 72,000. We want to get x by itself, divide by negative 12,000, make sure I have all my zeros in there, and we end up x being 4. And that would be 4 years. So here's a neat picture of what we just talked about. Here's our supply line and our demand line. This comes from cramster.com. And what we really want, and what we really want is this sweet spot right here. That's the equi equilibrium point. That's where the supply and the demand are equal. The quantity supplied of a good is the amount of a product that a company is willing to make available for sale at a given price. Quantity demanded of a good is the amount of a product that consumers are willing to purchase at a given price. Suppose that the quantity supplied S and the quantity demanded D of cellular phones each month are given by the following functions, where P is the price in dollars. The equilibrium price of a product is defined as the price at which quantity supplied equals quantity demand. That is, the equilibrium price is the price at which S of P equals D of P. Find the equilibrium price of cellular phones what is the equilibrium quantity? The amount demanded or supplied at the equilibrium price. So what we're going to do is first make S of P equal to D of P. So we have 60P minus 900 equals negative 15P plus 2850. We're going to solve for P, so we want the P's on the same side. We want to get everything else on the other side. And now we want to find P. And it turns out the price at the equilibrium point is $50. Determine the prices for which quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. That is, solve the inequality S of P is greater than D of P. And yeah, we just did that. But let me show you here really quick what that would look like. So to determine the price for which quantity supplied is greater then the quantity demanded is when the price is greater than $50. If the company charges more than $50 per phone, then quantity supplied will exceed quantity demanded. In this case, the company will have excess phones in the inventory. So let's graph this. So let's solve it by graphing. So I've already put this on my calculator. Y1 I put S of P, Y2 I put D of P, I did change my window again. Um, we don't care about the negative, so I just made my x min and y min very small. My x max I made 110, 
and then I made my y max 3000 and when I graphed it I came up with a really nice picture and here would be my equilibrium and so here is the equilibrium point when I did the intersection you'll notice that X is 50 and that's when the price of the phones are fifty dollars and they should have 2100 ready to go and this is what the book has it's a little bit nicer than our calculator once again here is our equilibrium point when X is 50 and Y is 2100 X is the price for the phones and in the quantity demanded is 2100 cost and this is for rentals or phones where you pay a set price and then you pay a little bit as you use it a phone company offers a domestic long distance package charging five dollars plus five cents a minute write a linear model that relates the cost C in dollars of talking time X minutes the first thing we know is just to have the phone it's going to be five dollars so we're going to have the five dollars plus the five cents a minute that we use to talk so if we change this so we have y equals mx plus b we have 0 0.05 that's our slope that's how it changes plus the five dollars so just having the phone is going to cost us five dollars what is the cost of talking 105 minutes or 108 minutes since x is the talking time we're going to put 105 in for x and it turns out to be ten dollars and twenty five cents the next part asks us if we use hundred and eighty minutes exact same thing and that would be fourteen dollars you ready to start homework three point one remember if you have any questions give me a call or send me an email